Hey guys, this is Joe, founder and host of StartupRate.io. As you guys may already know, I've run this podcast full-time since January 2021. I'm very happy to announce that Anchor FM is my sponsor for this podcast. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free and it's easy to use, even for a newbie. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome to StartupRad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Joe from StartupRate.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany, welcoming you to this month in German Startup Edition October 2021. Of course, again here with Chris from New York. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good. Fall has started. Uh, I haven't had a pumpkin spice latte yet. Maybe, maybe today. Who knows? I actually haven't had a pumpkin spice latte, like a real one as well, but I got a present, the pumpkin spice syrup, so I, I can make a fake pumpkin spice latte. For everybody listening to this or watching this, we recorded this new episode on October 25th. Note that there is also another episode of our Unicorn Tracker getting published alongside this episode in order to keep the news brief. Today, we have to announce that N26 reclaimed the title of Germany's most valuable fintech, but not startup. That title is still with Celonis. Zono Motors is filing for an IPO in the US ahead of even delivering their first car. And Corona is leaving the first traces in the startup scene. Less startups, but more funding for the surviving ones. Housekeeping, time to break. Just a tiny bit here. We are scratching another magic mark right now. We just scored number 104 in Chartable's global tech podcast charts. We're getting so close to cracking the global top 100. Keep downloading, guys. You're amazing. Thanks for your support. Talking about top news. As we said, Germany has a new most valuable fintech. N26 took the title back from Trade Republic, but the way to this monster funding was not easy. They raised 900 million US dollars at a valuation of 9 billion US dollars, becoming Germany's most valuable fintech and one of the world's 20 most valuable fintechs as well. You may remember they had trouble with the bank oversight and finance oversight body Baffin here in Germany, and they actually limited their new business due to many things. Uh, N26 accounts been used in scams, uh, not following strictly the money laundering rules and stuff like this. So they had some trouble and now they only have a limited amount of potential new business they can generate in Germany. Also, um, N26 CEO for Germany, not the co-founder, the CEO, but the person in charge only of Germany leaves the new bank for Hawk AI. Also, Germany's Flixbus acquired the legendary US Greyhound bus company from the current owner UK-based First Group for 120 million euros. That's 140 million US dollars. First Group was interested in selling the company already back in 2019. Of course, then Corona hit. Greyhound itself is of course suffering from Corona. They generated more than 10 million euro losses in Q1 2021 and cut 50% of their headcount since the start of Corona. 
Flix Mobility, the company behind the Flix Bus brand, was valued at 2.5 billion euros at their last fundraising in June this year. They already reached unicorn status back in 2018. And since this is the second time we are trying to record this because we are completely kicked out of the internet and then Chris experienced some difficulties. We already told our audience, or we should tell our audience that Flixbus here in Germany, even though it's called Flixbus, even though there are a lot of buses driving around in their branding, in their logo with the colors and all that stuff. Um, in Germany, the company doesn't own even one bus, they are just the mobility platform and um, small entrepreneurs uh, own one or more buses and they are franchisees of Flixbus. They are working for them. So they don't own any buses within Germany, but they changed strategy abroad. And this is one of the places they are doing this. Chris, what's your experience with Greyhound? Yeah, you know, actually, I mean, you know it from the movies and it's always this not nostalgic thing in the 60s and like, you know, the buses and it's more of a prop. I I think I probably took Greyhounds once or twice. I usually go with either more luxurious buses or even cheaper buses, mega bus, but also mega bus. And uh, I think either mega or bolt bus is one of the brands that also belongs to the Greyhound brand. Um you know, it's not great. I have to admit, I personally also took Greyhound buses back uh, when I was an undergrad student because they cheap. And for the very simple reason, the place where I went to college was only served by Greyhound and a subsidiary yeah. of American yeah. Airlines. So that have been my two choices. Christian? Definitely a place, though, where you can learn a lot from uh, about the country. <laughs> you meet all walks of people. Yeah, really and good. talking about learning about the country, you take the ecosystem, right? Yeah, so in the ecosystem, we got a couple of articles that help you understand the um, German startup landscape a bit better. For example, Gründerszene, a uh, website always really well covering the German startup scene. They have a um, list of 11 female business angels from Germany uh, that you should know. So, um, for, so fortunately, there is some progress being made there. Overall, though, the Kreditanstalt für Wiederaufbau, KFW, came up with a report saying that the number of startups in Germany decreased in 2020 by about 30%. I think um, that has to do with uh, Corona and the fact that probably it wasn't a time for people being really brave with their own endeavors, uh, Germans in general being a bit more risk averse than people in other countries where probably a crisis like Corona um, would have been a reason to exactly start a new business, whereas the Germans are more hesitant. We got news that Germany is uh, going to mine lithium under the Erzgebirge in Saxony, which is um, like a I don't know, like a mid-range mountain range. Um, and uh, But it's still an interesting story, I thought, because the white gold there, lithium is used in batteries, notebooks, tablets, smartphones, basically everywhere. Um, and usually it's um, a um, raw material that would be sourced in South America. So interesting there that um, apparently there is some um, parts of Germany where, where it can also be mined. We have um, seven takeaways from the Axel State of European SaaS report. Um, probably the biggest one being that SaaS capital raised in the US, in Israel, and the uh, and in the EU is at historic levels. So a bit more about this is also in the show notes. And we are, um, as always, not just looking at Berlin and Frankfurt, but also at other parts of Germany. And there we also have a little list of surprising parts of Germany where new businesses are blooming. And among them is um, a city called Leverkusen, which is also the headquarter of Bayer, um, Marburg in Hesse, and um, the main taunus kreis where you live just outside of Frankfurt. And which makes us also move on to the hubs. Yes. And uh, we should tell the people you are contractually obliged to have a New York siren in the background, 
if that is still not waiting. happening, you are still owing waiting. me a donut. Um, <laughs> as we said, talking about Harps Frankfurt here, Fresh Books, the Canadian unicorn, acquires Fast Bill to boost growth in Canada. No purchase price was published, but according to our information, a large share was paid in fresh book shares the price could be in the range of 100 million euros meaning 75 to 120 million euros depending on the multiple and the actual revenue former c-level executives of frankfurt listed evergreen vc fund finlab had differences with the former majority stakeholder. Now they want to use their connection to raise their own VC fund. And a developing story, Bitcoin miner Northern Data forecasted 120 million euro revenues and delayed the publication of the numbers. Keep in mind, they are listed. Then they published the numbers and came out with 16.4 million revenues less than 20% of the forecast. Of course, finance oversight Baffin fight charges, and we we'll keep you updated on this story. Christian, I do believe you have a sweet, a soft spot for Heidelberg, right? Oh, there, there's the siren. I heard the siren. There you go. Boom, boom, boom. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, Heidelberg, um, I haven't been that often, but it's on a lot of tourist lists, obviously. And it's a lot of like Germany in a nutshell that you would expect if you come to Germany. And it's in um, Baden-Württemberg, the state where I used to live. And there we have the Strüngmann Billionaire Twin Brothers, kind of like the German Winkelwassers, I don't know, uh, who made their BioNTech success possible as large, made the BioNTech success possible as large scale investors. BioNTech is the partner of Pfizer, what is known here in the US as the Pfizer vaccine. And now, uh, those twin brothers invest in the Heidelberg based FinTech Get Safe. Um, we also have some more background about them in the show notes. We also have Hamburg as a more, much bigger city, more well known in the north, where Health Hayflow, um, raises six million US dollars in funds, um, in order to improve click flow on websites. Hamburg based circular bioeconomy startup Traceless Materials received a 2.4 million euro EIC grant to quickly scale up its technology. That's around like 2.5 million dollars. Um, in Munich, where f is uh, the headquarters of Flixbus, which we just talked about. But there's also another Schmaby unicorn. The Munich-based solar car firm Sono Motors files uh, for a US IPO, as is reported by Reuters. Um, the IPO could then value the company with more than a billion US dollars, but the first cars will only be delivered in 2023. And we have German online dating website Parship, which is looking for an IPO in Frankfurt in spring next year and uh, are now hired two investment banks for this purpose. In Cologne, we see that Iris Capital, New Forge and Instana founder j uh, join existing investors in a 20 point sorry in a 27.8 million us dollars funding in arango db uh, or db uh, uh, to be more precise because the cologne based startup offers an open source no sql database once from cologne where we have like one the number but an nce so the o of the word becomes the one is the first joint investment from deutsche telekom and softbank it's an internet of things startup um, raising in total 43 million euros, 50 million US dollars. Apologies for the little phone intervention here. And we move on to Constance, where Fruitcore Robotics grabs 17 million euros in funding. Constance, uh, of course, to the southern, uh, southwesternmost end of Germany, um, where there's Lake Constance. You see, connect the dots. And Austria, um, where, uh, there we also have one, uh, tiny news bit being the Norwegian IT giant Visma, who bought the Vienna based cloud accounting startup ProSaldo Net. And 
you might have already figured it out because Austria obviously is an independent country and not Germany anymore, but it is a German language country, just like Switzerland. And so we like to have a look at them too. In Switzerland, we see that Co-Next postponed their IPO at six in Switzerland, which was originally planned for early October due to unfavorable market conditions, they said. We have Locati, a workplace analytics startup that raised 7.1 million euro. We have the ETH spin-off Skivo, S-C-E-W-O. They raised 8.5 million Swiss francs, which is roughly 7.8 million euros uh, of venture capital for their stair climbing wheelchair. Frontify, a company that got 50 million US dollars from investors like Reva, High Sage Ventures, as well as existing uh, investors for their platform, um, on which companies can manage their brand presence. We have $1 million for a sport deck startup called Coach Better to digitize football coaching. And we have Volkswagen's Air and one of Elon Musk's investors um, who invests in Switzerland-based car subscription startup Carify. So we're also here looking at this idea of why not make car ownership a subscription service. So much about what's happening in the different startup hubs all over German language country, the Dach region, as we say, D-A-C-H, Deutschland, Österreich, Schweiz. Back to you. Thank you. Let's follow up with the general news company section. The Germany company Autark, spelled A-U-T-A-R-Q, may just have surpassed Tesla with their solar roof tiles. Talking about SPACs here, there's one article, Factbox, major European SPAC listing this year. The market seemed to cool. They are writing. European SPACs have raised 6.6 .6 billion US dollars so far this year, according to Refinitiv data. While that's up just 500 million from 2020, it's still only about 5% of the value of the SPAC deals done in the United States 2021. There's another piece on of news on SPACs. New SPACs, GFH ESG Acquisition SE is announced. It shall be listed in Frankfurt to buy startups and tech companies in sustainable technologies. The company is initiated by well-known founders and a corporate CFO. They want to raise 150 million euros. GoPuff, the Philadelphia-based quick commerce startups, enters the German market, adding to an already hot competition with Joker, Gorillas, and others. QWEC, CureVac, wants a hope in Germany for developing a corona vaccine, stops the development of the current corona vaccine, and starts over with a new approach. The first vaccine candidate did not fulfill the expectations. And then we have a multiple PE funds are still fighting over the buyout of C so plus, so plus the takeover. Um, initially 390 million, 390 euros per share was, uh, raised 40% since mid August and currently the shares are trading at 490 euros. This leads the market to conclude there is more in it for the shareholders. We keep you up to date. And there is venture capital. Eight Roads Ventures raises 450 million US dollars VC fund targeting 15 to 20 scale ups in Europe. Vehiculum wanted to turn the leasing industry upside down. Now a funding round fell through and they have to file for insolvency. Um, and a Newman backed go to global acquires German OPET sharing startup. EWS buys a stake in UK based retirement fintech smart. Beloa, German, Beloa's German money pit. They are a Swiss based insurance company. Their Berlin based insurtech Friday is not working out as planned. There's a little bit of sad news. A helicopter crash kills the founder of August Intelligence. The startup 
in the center of the Amtor affair involves questionable lobbying by a member of the German parliament, the Mr. Amtor, and he was lobbying for August intelligence. Very selected fundraisings, really a very, very small selection. Inkit books 59 million euros investment. Germany's construction tech startup Schutfix raises 43.1 million. And factoring fintech Billy raises 86 million euros. That's 100 million US dollars, tripling their valuation. Adding to that, they also have, uh, from their partners, Magakurt Volksbank Raisin and Warengold, a 170 million euro line of credit. And finally, Landesbank Berlin issued more than 1 million credit cards for Amazon's German customers. Now it appears the bank shifts strategy and ends the cooperation. Chris, it was as always a pleasure working with you. There are some articles in Stay Ahead of the Curve, and we will be back next month. Hey, Chris, as always, it was a pleasure working with you. Um, I think we meet again shortly before Thanksgiving, and then we publish the next November news on Thanksgiving Day. How would you like, how would you like that? Let's do that. The pleasure would be all mine. Great. Thanks, Chris. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.